All right, we have a cone that has a radius of two meters at the top. It has a height of sixth, and it is inverted, I guess, and it's filled with two meters of hot chocolate. This is as close to hot chocolate color as I could get with my pen, but that thing is filled up to a level of two meters with hot chocolate. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna slice this cone of hot chocolate up into little pieces. Each one of those little slices is gonna have a width of dy and a height from the bottom of the cone of y. Now we wanna find the volume of each one of these little slices, I'll just call that dv, so that we know how much this little slice weighs and we therefore know how much work it's going to take to get it out of this cone. Now we know that the volume of each one of these little slices is just going to be pi r squared, that's the area of the little circle created down here, times its width dy. Well we'd like this to be in terms of y, so we want to get that r out of there and relate that to y. So for any height of this hot chocolate we can see that the ratio 2 over 6 is going to be proportional to to the radius of that hot chocolate cone divided by the height of that hot chocolate cone. Now down here we said that the height of this little cone of hot chocolate is going to be y, so we can replace h with y and multiply by y and we get one third y equals r. If we plug that into this formula to get the volume of this little slice of hot chocolate, we get one ninth pi y squared dy as the volume of each one of these little slices. The next question is what is the weight of that little slice. You'll notice that we have a density. It's given as 1030 kilograms per meter cubed. If we take that density and multiply it by the volume that we just found, that will give us the mass of this slice. And that's a mass and not a force or a weight because our units are given as kilograms. Because our units are in kilograms, to find the actual weight of this thing, we need to multiply by the acceleration of gravity, which is approximately 9.8 meters per second squared. That's gonna give us the units that we need for the weight of this slice. So the next question is, what is the work that we need to do to remove that little slice of water from the cone? And the work that we need to do is just the weight of that slice times the distance that we need to lift it out of the cone. And as you can see from the graph, the distance that we need to move that little slice of hot chocolate and lift it out of the cone, is just gonna be a distance of six minus y. And now finally, the total work that we're going to do to remove all of the slices is just the sum of all of the works that we needed to do to remove one of those slices. That means we're going to integrate for all possible values of y in this little cone of hot chocolate. The smallest possible value of y in that hot chocolate is 0, and the largest possible value of y is 2. So there it is. That is our integral. We can take all of the constants out of it, and we get this integral right here. To integrate, it's probably going to be best to distribute that y squared through the parentheses. And now it looks like we can actually integrate. And if we get out our calculators, uh, I hope that I plug this all in correctly. I'm getting approximately 42,280 joules of work needed to take all of this water, or uh, sorry, this hot chocolate in this tank and remove it. Okay, I hope that that video helped you out. Uh, sorry it went a little bit quick. Hopefully you can use your pause button to stop it wherever you need to. But I am going to go on to the next video. Thanks for watching.